Hey, you guys, it's your girl, T, and I want to come out here and talk about this disturbing case. And, of course, it's coming from our first favorite state, Ratchet-Ass Florida. So this story is really, really sad. One of my subscribers sent this to me over the weekend. It's about an 18-year-old teen mother. She has a 15-month-old son, and she was due to graduate from high school in two weeks. So what went down is that basically her ex-boyfriend, he's also the father of her child. His name is Kai Williams. The 18-year-old girl, her name is Larissa Barros. And basically, they're saying that she was a very smart girl. She was in AP classes. She was on the sports team. And she was also taking care of her 15-month-old son. She had been in a relationship with Kai Williams for a few years. Um, he was 20, so he graduated two years ago. And they were at one point in time engaged. But then he became very abusive towards her, putting his hands on her. So then she eventually broke up with him and she wanted to move on with her life. But he could not move on. He was stalking this girl. And they even said that six months ago, he came up to the school. People spotted his car at the school and he sliced her tires and set her vehicle on fire. So at that point in time, they called the police. They were able to get a restraining order. They also had it where he had to check in with his probation officer to let him know, you know, where he was at at all times. He was, you know, kind of being monitored. And the day that this event happened, he had just checked in with the probation officer. So what happened is that around 12.05 p.m., Larissa called the police and she let them know that somebody was trying to break into her home and that they were armed. And at that point, you know, she was scared for her life. So the guy breaks into her house. He ends up shooting and killing her. As he's running out trying to get away because she had already called the police, so the police were already en route, they ended up spotting somebody who fit the description of what Larissa was saying. As they went to go confront Kai Williams, he pulls out his gun and he shoots himself. So this entire situation is just straight up heartbreaking. I want you guys to go ahead and check out this news clip. Check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Before she was supposed to graduate from high school. We were just really close, man, and, like, I just, I wish I, there was more I could have done. Tonight, we're learning more about her relationship with the man deputies believe may have killed her. The friends and family of 18-year-old Larissa Barros told us tonight she had a bright future ahead and was taking the world by storm. Good evening, I'm Greg Warmoth. And I'm Martha Sigalski. Tonight, her friends tell us nothing but great things about this high school senior who was getting ready to graduate. She was among the top students at Liberty High School, at the top of her class academically, and on her way to Florida State University. The friends of the single mother say she juggled AP classes and varsity sports to be the best example for her young son. Channel 9's Ty Russell spoke to her closest friends and joins us live tonight and Ty understandably they are heartbroken they are heartbroken Martha and I also talked to the victim's sister off camera who told me that her sister was defying all of the odds she was going to graduate at the top of her class and even go on to uh, Florida State University and tonight those relatives are inside of this home you could just see the number of cars outside they are all grieving over the loss of their loved one Friends handed us these pictures tonight of Liberty High School senior and athlete Larissa Barros, who was killed inside her home just two weeks shy of graduation. I wish you were still here because, like, you don't, you didn't deserve, you didn't deserve what, what happened at all. Friends say she was also a mom and her son just turned one in February. And it sucks that she has to pass away for everyone, for the community to realize what a, an amazing, wonderful person she was. Tonight, deputies won't say who killed her, but they confirmed 20-year-old Kai Williams. Her estranged boyfriend matched the description of a burglar who broke into the victim's home this afternoon. And when they closed in on him, he shot and killed himself a block away. I was just speechless. I didn't know what to do, and I just broke down later on. Barros told the court about two years' worth of issues with Williams. Barros was granted an injunction in January after she said he set her car on fire, slashed her tires, sent her threatening text messages and letters. Records show Williams was arrested for aggravated stalking and violating a first restraining order that expired last September. And friends say they knew Barros was handling so much outside of school. <laughs> we were just really close, man, and like, I just, I wish I, there was more I could have done to help her. Now tonight, relatives were too emotional to go on camera. Now in the morning, students and friends told me that they will wear her jersey number and even Florida State colors in her honor. Now also in the morning, we plan to follow up with Osceola deputies to find out if they will confirm who exactly killed her. 
We are live tonight in Osceola County. Ty Russell, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Investigators believe a teen mother was murdered by her estranged ex just days before Mother's Day and her high school graduation. And now we know she told the court she was afraid this would happen. And new for six, we've learned all the ways the legal system was tracking him in order to prevent more violence. Restraining orders, GPS monitors, and check-ins with the Department of Corrections, all three were used to keep tabs on Kai Williams while the courts tried to sort out the domestic violence's girlfriend, Larissa Barros, was reporting. Good evening, I'm Greg Warman. And I'm Martha Sagowski. We now know the man accused of killing the honor roll student and mother talked to corrections officials just one day before the murder. Channel 9's Sierra Putman has been talking to investigators about this case, and Sierra, investigators tell you they don't know where Williams got a gun because he was supposed to give up any weapons. And they say they know that this gun was not stolen, but they're not sure who it actually belonged to. Now, deputies believe that the suspect first used the gun on his ex-girlfriend before turning it on himself. Back in January, Larissa Barros had to write a statement explaining why she was asking for a second restraining order against the father of her child. She wrote Kai Williams was unstable and jealous. The 18-year-old also said her ex posted a video on Instagram of him browsing a gun shop. She would be shot and killed five months later inside her own home. And deputies believe it was Williams who did it before taking his own life. We know it's not a stolen gun, but we do not know where the gun came from yet. Captain Jacob Reese says the January restraining order required him to turn over any weapons to the Osceola County Sheriff's Office. We don't automatically go and check everybody's home that is upon the, 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 the respondent to turn those in. But the order would have also turned up during background checks if he tried to buy one legally. Williams' first run-in with the law was last September. A witness reported seeing his car near Liberty High School parking lot when someone vandalized and set Barrow's car on fire. Williams was later charged with aggravated stalking and monitored by GPS. He stayed away from Barrow's but ended up back in jail in December when he texted her. She told the court, quote, I'm afraid he will hurt me or my child if he gets the opportunity. But Williams' felony charge was dropped for lack of evidence and this time no GPS monitor was required. And Williams was released from jail in January. In order to stay free, he had to check in once a week with a corrections officer, which he did even on Wednesday, the day before the suspected murder-suicide. Reporting live in Osceola County, Sierra Putman, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. All right, so you guys just saw those news clips. You know, this whole situation is sad. This is a young 18-year-old girl who was getting ready to graduate high school, who had her whole life in front of her. Um, she was already accepted into college. You know, she did not let the fact that she was a teen mother deter her. She didn't use that as an excuse to fail. She didn't use that as an excuse to drop out of high school. If anything, she used the birth of her son to make her do better. You know what I'm saying? She was in all AP classes. She was getting good grades. She had a lot of friends. She was very active in her school. And to have her life cut down in this manner just broke my heart. And I just feel like it's really sad that a lot of police departments around the country do not take domestic violence and stalking seriously. You know, it's just a really, really sad situation. This boy, Kai Williams, obviously needed help. He needed a lot more help than just a restraining order. He definitely needed to be locked up. He needed a, you know, a psych evaluation. He needed help because this is not normal. Before she passed away, before he killed her, he went to the school and sliced her tires and burnt her vehicle. That alone is arson. That vehicle could have blew up the whole damn parking lot at the school. So that right there, you know, shows intent to hurt her. He should have been locked up right there and then for that. So why he was allowed to just get probation and to still be on the streets is beyond me. You know, I really feel like this situation could have been prevented I mean this is just really sad you know I just feel like as young women people need to take heed to stories like this because stories like this are happening more and more where people just do not know how to let go of relationships and it's very very scary you know people need to realize that when somebody is threatening you you have to take that seriously you guys know the shit that I've been going through. I don't play games like that. I report everything to the police and who I need to report it to. And you have to do that. You have to let them know. You have to start building a paper trail because once you build that paper trail, then at that point, you can get them arrested and get them locked up. But it's unfortunate that the police here kind of dropped the ball. You know, granted, they were monitoring him and they were trying to stay on top of him. But a restraining order is not an invisible force shield. It's just a piece of paper. 
you know, it, it doesn't mean anything. And unless she was calling the police every single time he would just pop up, they're unable to build that paper trail. So, you know, like I said, you have to take these type of things seriously. If you have a restraining order on somebody and you're seeing them in certain places or they're showing up by your house, call every single time. Build that paper trail because all they're doing is basically giving themselves enough rope to get hung with. And eventually, once you build that paper trail and it's shown that this damn restraining order, this piece of paper is not doing anything, this guy is still stalking me, then at that point in time, a lot of police departments will take it more seriously and throw the person in jail. You know, this is just so unfortunate. I feel extremely bad for her. You know, now you have a child who's going to grow up in this world where he no longer has a mother, he no longer has a father, and all because, what, the father was crazy and couldn't understand that she didn't want to be with him anymore? You know, so nobody wins in this situation. This is just, you know, two young people's lives snuffed out and over what? Over a failed relationship. This is just really, really sad. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. Once again, coming from our first favorite state, ratchet-ass Florida. All right, deuces. Hey you guys, it's your girl T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.